And so, what's up, y'all? Uh, we can't make this shit up. You know, we've been doing this for a year straight. COVID, we lost a lot of people. Uh, Prince Marky D, Fred the Godson, um, and just countless others. But it's never been like this. And so, DMX, he's one of them. He's a superhero. He's a superhero. Beyond talented. One of the greatest rappers ever. But more than that, he's the guy next door. He's you. He's your brother. He's your cousin. He's your uncle. Um... And so that's why we relate so much to him. And a lot of times when people go through things in life and they go through failures or flaws or whatever you have you, unfortunately, these are the things that make them great. And, and for instance, when we say my sister Mary J. Blige, and she sings from so much pain and sings for the women so much. And uh, and the women want to hear that, and they love her for that. But at the same time, she had to go through a lot in life to write those songs and do those songs. And so the same goes with DMX. Uh, the man had an energy like none other. They say legends never die. And so what I see a lot out there is He's home now. He's not in pain. And Lord knows what kind of pain DMX went through in his life. What kind of demons he was dealing with. What kind of issues. Um, but still in all, every time you've seen this man, me personally, I remember being at Jimmy's Bronx Cafe and I see DMX in the bathroom. And I'm like... Yo, X, what's up? The man drops to his knees and starts praying for me in the middle of the club, in the bathroom. And so, you know me, I'm, you know, we drunk, we did. I'm like, yo, this guy's bugged out. But what was it? What was it about his spirit? What was it about him? What did he know that we didn't know? That he would stop and pray for everyone right then and there. And so we could talk about, you know, stories we used to say before about DMX. I don't think we could do it. And there's one thing I always say, black and Spanish people are the same, but there's one thing different. When, when Spanish people die, they don't want to turn on the radio. They don't want to celebrate. When black people die, they say we got to celebrate their life. And that's the only area I could find uh, confliction. And so... I won't tell you the DMX story about when he was already famous and he robbed the guy in front of me and pun. I won't tell you these other crazy but this is hard. And all day I was scared um, to turn this on and come on here and talk to you because we do this consistently. We do this every day. Uh, today's very different. Um, I want to shout out Swiss Beats. No matter what turbulence, no matter what DMX went through, Swiss always had his back. Swiss always talked him into positivity. Swiss always tried to bring him back. Swiss always uplifted him. Uh, D, Y, the Rough Rider family. Terror Squad and Rough Riders pretty much have been impact. If you look at the late great big pun, him and DMX, same class, same era. All my songs with Jada Kiss, with the locks, with. The and so I've always admired the Rough Riders' unity, their brotherhood, their kinship, their friendship. And even though People tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and tried to get the dog in, the, in what we call the right path. Uh, you know, it was a long job. And I've dealt with that in my own life with personal 
family, my own brother. So I know this is difficult. This is this this is hard to do. And all we could do is support each other. You know, DMX man, uh, he did drink chance with Nori. It was one hell of an interview, and he looks so good, man. And he and he and he looks so happy. And he'd been hanging out with Nori a lot down here in Miami. And he'd show up with this Publix. He brings the Publix chicken. Publix is the supermarket down here in Miami. And he brings the Publix chicken. And and, and they would eat. And, and, and Nori's fancy now. And he'd be like, yo, this dude, he brings buckets of Publix. And i say, yo, but you with the dog, man. And so DMX, man. There'll never be another DMX. And so we need to learn to tell everybody we love them. Shout out to Q-Tip. My brother Q-Tip, we don't speak that often, but Q-Tip hit me today and said, Joe, I love you. And so we need a lot more of that, uh, especially guys who's getting older like us. We never know what's there, man. We, we all borrow time. And so everybody gets a shot at this life. Everybody, when you go to the cemetery, you see born, you see the dash, you see died. It's what you do with that dash. What you do with that dash that makes the difference. And so X, no matter what kind of pain, no matter what he's been through, he always chose to uplift the people and to love the people. And bear it on his shoulder, and I watch him, and I be like, wow, this guy. And he never seemed comfortable. He always seemed like he was trying to get something out and didn't know, it, but he was getting it out. And so um, we lost a major, 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 major key in hip-hop. And so we got to love each other. If you love someone, I challenge you to tell them you love them. Tell him or her you love him today because we do not know and we don't get no do-overs. Life is not a dress rehearsal. We can't do yesterday today. And so somebody like X, and so no, none of us never really know how much people love us, how much impact we have, how, how much influence we have. You know, we all energy. We're all a form of energy. And the man chose to praise God. The man chose. And it, and it was just something that was just above him and out of his reach. And he tried. And X tried and tried and tried to get back. He tried to get into stay positive and stay focused. He tried. And so you got to understand the enemy is out there. The enemy is real. Sometimes the enemy looks just like us. And I can, I can give you a for instance, you know, of, you know, I don't know if I need to go there. But sometimes we grow up with people and we think they are friends and, and they love us and all that. And sometimes they bring us to the dark when we're trying to change and go to the light and try to grow and that, you take that however you want to take that. Um, and so the man going through his trials and tribulations, we all prayed for him. And I was praying. Like, I knew this was a serious thing. Like, I had inside information that this was a serious thing. And I just kept praying and praying because I believe in God and I believe in the miracles. I believe in the supernatural God. I believe that, you know, he, he can lift anyone up. And so I kept thinking, um, let him get up, let him come back. And so God said, yo, he's coming with me. Um, and so we got to uplift him and uplift his name and his legacy. And we got to give him hell, guys. Anybody who's here, who loves hip hop, who's been around as long as us, who lives, eats, sleep, hip hop. You gotta give him hell for DMX. You gotta raise hell. In the most kindness and positive way 
We have to raise hell. And in 20, 30 years from now, when hip hop turns around and they look back at this time, you see thousands of people. The motorcycles got to come out for the Rough Riders. Everybody got to come out. His family has to know that he's really, 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 really blessed us with his presence. And that's, that's all I can give you tonight. That's all I can tell you about the man tonight. Tonight I'm going to let the people on and let a couple of just random people tell us what DMX felt to them and how important he was to the hip hop culture. I know as far as me, uh, I can never forget when stop, drop, shut him down, open up shop. Oh, no. When I tell you, I remember I was in the Bronx. I used to park my car on Southern Boulevard. When I tell you that every single car in America, passing by, was playing that DMX. It felt like the God. And my brother Swiss came from Jackson in the Bronx, and he was doing the production. Man, it was nothing like this, man. It was nothing, nothing like this. And there's people with incredible DMX stories, because y'all, listen to me. The man was a character. He was something else, man. He was a character. He was something else. Stand up, man. Stand up, man. Stand up, guy. My, you heard he went to jail, this, that. You never heard a story of anybody playing with DMX. Stand up, guy. A real one. And that's what we all dream of is dying a real one. And uh, my prayers go out to his family, uh, his fans. We're all hurt today, bro. We're all hurt today. Everybody's hurt. Nobody's having fun. We all hurt. And so what you could do is play his music. You could support him as much as you can. But you know something's wrong today. No matter how much somebody tells you a joke or whatever the case may be, it just ain't the same today. And so the dog, with everything he went through, we always wonder, do they know how much we love him? Once you're gone, you're gone. It ain't no U-turns. And so what I meant by let's give him hell is let's uplift his memory, his legacy. When his family wakes up, they know he meant something to the world. He meant something to all of us in our hearts and our souls. And that's what it's about, that he meant. He said to live is to suffer. That's right in a lot of cases. A lot of people are suffering on earth right now. You know, and when, it, when you see family members, what, what, whether it be illness, whether it be anything in the world, and you know they're suffering. And sometimes you look at them and you say, was there better? My sister was in a coma for eight months. In a coma for eight months after giving birth. When she passed away, I was like, there was a part of me that was like, God bless. She ain't got to suffer. My mother don't got to go there every day to the hospital and watch my sister like that. And so it's very, you know, it's a challenging time. You know, the family did whatever they could to stand by him and do whatever they could you know, from what I understand, shout out to Lisa Evans. She was out there reporting every minute, every hour on the hour. Lisa Evans uh, up there in New York and was giving us the info, the correct info. And I knew that was hard. And I know New York, although he's an international star, I know New York is very hurt. Very, very, very hurt on another level because we, we, we lost one of our guys from the Mount Rushmore. We lost one of these guys that can never be duplicated again. And for the youth, if you don't know about DMX, 
You need to look into it, man. You need to look into a brother who came from nothing and built an empire, who started acting and had like movie picture deals. The movie he did with Aaliyah was incredible. And just, you know, with me, when I think of X, I think of Pun. I think they, because they was running in packs. They came out the same era, same everything. And, um, and he's going to be missed, um, to say the least. And we just can't take nobody else for granted. Anybody else in your family, any friend you really love, holler at them, man. Let them know you love them. You know, that's the biggest thing, you know. That's the biggest thing about this whole thing. You know, we wonder as much as we love DMX, did he know we love him that much? And so if he ain't know, it's time to show his family how much we love him. And I'm there for it. people. Shout out to Yonkers. You lost a real one, man. Shout out to Yonkers. You know Tess Moo coming up real soon and we just gonna let that music vibe out. See guys, don't request if you ain't ready. Be ready. Yeah, shout out to the locks. Shout out to Drag On. Shout out to the whole Rough Riders. Eric B, what's good? Scorpio, Mr. Ness, I love you. Yo, Eric B. Joe, what it look like? You looking younger than ever, my brother. Working at it, man. No drugs. Ain't drinking, so I got to attribute that to it. You've been focused. Tell me a story about DMX, or, or if you didn't know him as close as everybody else. Just tell us his impact when you've seen him and you heard him. You know, you come from the le legendary Eric B and Rakim, the god Rakim, one of the greatest rappers ever. You know, I've seen some pictures Rakim put up, and I know Rakim as a fan. Uh -huh. His glow and his smile to take this picture with DMX, these pictures were really, really serious. Like, he really loved yeah. X. So could what? you tell me about X? What did he do for the hip-hop game? I mean, X X is one of those guys. I, I've watched it. He he wears his... I've seen what you posted. He wears his emotions on his sleeve. And one thing about X, if he loved you, he'll take his right arm off and give it to you. Mm. So everything that you've seen, whatever you heard on the records, whatever you've seen in person is what you got. He's never been a fake person. If he liked you, he liked you. If he loved you, he, he overloved you. And, you know, I tell everybody, X is one of those guys that you would want him to be your, one of your relatives. At the 11th hour, he's always going to be there for you, no matter what. Through his darkest days, you know, he, he was always our brother, will always continue to be our brother. I know the struggles that he went through with, with you know, with, with alcohol and drugs, that doesn't matter to me. I knew X, the man, his heart, and what he, what he would do for you. So, you know, a lot of people, I've seen a lot of idiots out there talking about why didn't people help him? You know, when you're dealing with that kind of addiction, you don't want help. You know what I'm saying? You got to help yourself. You know what I'm saying? You don't think that we all wanted to see X straight? You don't think we wanted him to, to die old and be 100 years old and die? Of course we did. Of course everybody talked to him, uh, you know, about his drug abuse, you know, and stuff that he was doing. But, you know, at the end of the day, he had to stop doing that himself. And that's not for us to judge because he was our brother and somebody that we loved. You know what I'm saying? So... A lot of these idiots, oh, people around him should have done this. People around him should have done that. X lived his life the way he wanted to live his life. You know what I'm saying? I and mean, what, what, you know, I got a brother, same thing. 
right? And I, I'm sure he's watching, so I don't want to diss my brother in no way, shape, or form. But same thing, a million drug programs, a million lawyers, a million this, a million that. hundred million times and I couldn't stop him and I was very very upset with my brother because I always thought it was selfish of him until I realized it was a it was a it was a it's an illness man yes and it's much stronger than the person and as much as you want to stop it's so overpowering that uh I've seen the smartest and the greatest minds fall victim to it. No, let me say something to you. Joe, my oldest brother was addicted to everything, and I'm not trying to throw him under the bus. He'll tell you that. He was smoking crack. He was drinking. He was getting high. And then we turned around. I took him on the road with me, and he stopped doing all of that stuff. And, he, and I attribute everything. Like, I learned how to read and write from my older brother. You know what I'm saying? So I love the ground that he walked on. But, you know, he had that bad addiction, but I never let him go. You know what I'm saying? I held him up in his darkest days, and I'll still continue to, to, to big my older brother up. I remember when I told him, oh, you know, I just want to ride motorcycles and sit in the garage and chase women like you. And he told him, right, he said, he said Eric, are you fucking stupid or something? He said, yo, sit here. He, he taught me how to read and write. Because, you know, when I was reading, when I was a little kid, I didn't want to read and write. I thought I knew everything. I could ride a motorcycle. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm six, seven years old. I can ride motorcycles, you know, in my sleep. And I thought that that was the, the end all tell all. And he sat me down and he made me do my time tables every day. Um, worked on my addiction. You know, I was talking, this is why I'm talking like a robot. Uh, I'm reading. Yes, this is this. He said, you sound stupid as a motherfucker. So he taught me everything that I learned. So when somebody has a drug addiction like that, you got to ride with them. You know what I'm saying? And I love my older brother to death, man. And he'll tell you that. We talk about this all the time, Joe. And a lot of people ask me, they asked me last week to do some uh, a drug counseling. And I said, I can't do drug counseling. Why, why won't you come and talk to them? I said, because I never got high before, Joe. I don't drink, Joe. So if I go into a drug counseling place and I'm talking to people, it looks like I'm going like this. And, and I'm talking down on you. I can't talk from that experience, Joe, because I never got high before. You know what I'm saying? So I, you know, I turn down these things. I'll, I'll support my brothers in any kind of way I can, but I would never get in front of them and say, oh, what you're doing is the worst shit in the world and it's fucked up because it's, it's an addiction, Joe. It's not you're getting high just to get high. These, they have a bad addiction, man. And we, have to have, and we have to have this uncomfortable conversation, yeah. Joe, that we don't have. We're afraid, yeah. we're afraid to have this uncomfortable conversation. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's taboo for us to talk about that. You know, it's taboo yeah. for us to talk about our uncle that has mental, you know, mental problems. We have to stop, stop being afraid to have an uncomfortable conversation. And it's time for us to put it on the table. Yes, man. Uh, yo, Eric, man, thank you for getting on here with me, my brother. I know it's tough. You know, I love you. You're a mentor to me. You're somebody I look up to. Uh, I think we got to start telling everybody, even though we do, but we got to start letting everybody know we love them, you know, and health is wealth. Um, take no. care of yourself, my brother. You know, I love you. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Definitely. I love you too. I've been making my calls too, Joe. So let's keep right, making these calls all day. Peace. Let's keep making these calls. One love. Eh? All right. Love you, bro. And so, Sarah B, Merrick B and Rakim. Eric B for president, and he's right, you know. And so today was a serious one. And so what we got to do is uplift his memory, uplift his legacy, and, that, and, 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 and that's it. That, 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 that's all you can do is say he was a real man, he was a positive soul on this earth. He helped tons and tons and tons of people, people he had never met in his life through his spiritual work, through his words, um, and his music. Don't get it fucked up, man. I know y'all seen that video out there where he did like Woodstock, and it was like two million people out there singing all his shit. I mean, this guy was different.
DMX can spit with the best of them. He had the anthems of all anthems. I mean, this guy, this ain't no, this, I mean, no disrespect, man. This a big one we lost. And so, hold on, let me see somebody out here. And so, you know, I've been listening to his music all day, and he was telling us in his music, but he was letting you know what he was going through in life through his music, slipping, falling, can't get up. And uh, man, you know, but you never know. You never know. And so we never knew that he would go so young. We never knew. And so, here we are. And me, I have a tough job, guys. Cause you know, y'all know me as Fat Joe the Rapper, then y'all know me in the big, big show. And that, like I tell you all the time, doing this show has been like, good morning, Vietnam. Like when I tell you about the people who have passed in this last year due to this COVID, like Andre Harrell, everybody, I mean, man, the amount of people who has been passing away has been like fucking incredible. And I got to turn this shit on. And I got to talk to y'all. And I got to tell y'all what I think or what's going on or how I feel. This ain't an easy job, bro. This right here, talking to y'all right now, this shit is like, this not, this real shit. And it's not easy. And so, like I said, we're going to continue to pray, pray for his family, pray for his kids, his fiance. I mean, damn, man. Like, this, 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 this is a painful one, man. And um, hold up one second. Man. Crack. Yo, Ted. What Let's take it? them there for DMX, man. What did DMX mean for you? You've been DJing how many years, Ted? At least 35, man. 35 um, years? Yeah, I've been, I mean, I've, been do, I've been doing this professionally since I was 15 years old. I'm about to be 50 this year, bro. Yo, Ted. Let's take it to him for DMX. Let's celebrate his life. Um, and let's go. Let's party with the people, man, because let's go through it. One time for X, but <laughs> Man, too many, man. They're smooth. Thank you so much. The people Love. needed that. Um, you always come with it. You're always official. You're a living legend in what you do. I love you. I thank you for playing all the great music. Um, let me let me let me let me sign the people off and we talk later, right? Well, I love y'all. Yeah. Rest in peace, DMX. Word. So I know the sound was a little uh fuzzy wuzzy, but you know, don't blame Ted, blame Instagram. He's in the studio. Like in the studio with speakers, I thought he was gonna show y'all the speakers. The speakers are to the ceiling, and we still couldn't hear the shit. I just couldn't understand why we couldn't get it clear. And uh, and so I want to tell you all. Uh, I know Joe's the dawn, and we gotta be a certain way. But I want y'all to know that I'm honored. Uh that you even take the time out to listen to me, that you ever supported me in my life. And I love you all. And uh, the most um, misunderstood thing about Fat Joe would probably be that I'm really for the people. And I really love the people. And I really serve 
this hip hop culture. And, and it's easy to stay out the way, stay out the radar. You know, we hurt, I'm in pain, I'm human. I'm a human being and, and I'm hurt because of my brother DMX passed away. I'm hurt that hip hop lost a national treasure. I'm destroyed. And so I know how you guys feel. So I turn it on so I could talk to y'all. But I love you all, man. And I thank you for the blessings. I thank you for everything you've done, not just for me, but for every artist in hip hop. How you have supported us through our ups and downs. How have you have lifted us up. You let us live our dreams out. You know, DMX, man, he lived his dream out. And he said, uh, thank you for letting him live his dreams out. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for going to his shows. Thank you for buying his music. Thank you for supporting him. Thank you for loving him. You know, and that's the same thing I got to tell you. Timbo the King on the check-in. Let me see if Timbo the King. And we had Swiss, but I understand Swiss. And so we thank you, man. We thank you. We love you. You didn't have to do this. You didn't have to put us in this position. Timbo the King. What's up, brother? Uh, rough day for hip hop. Tell me what you admired Very most. Very rough. What did you admire most about the dog DMX and his contributions to the hip hop game? Well, people don't realize that we had a, he's like, a, he's, he was a prophet. Mm. And when you look back at all his prayers and his rap, those was testimony. He, he, those was testimonies, um, like testimonies. And um, he was, uh, he was writing his book of Eli for us, right in front of our face. And people don't realize how hard it is. Like, I'm a spiritual person. I pray a lot, but I don't really Me pray too. in front of people. People don't know how much courage it is. And, you, you know, we got real pastors out there. We got real guys. Who, and for him to come out there and just be boldly uh, expressing prayer and God, that, that's even scarier than, than rapping. That, that, that's, that's why I said, that's why I said, he, it's like this one, Joe, I ain't gonna lie, this one, this one hit different. This one is different. You know, it made me think about like Aaliyah. It, it just hit different, bro. I can't even I can't even explain it. You I know you can hear it in my voice, but it just just, just hit different. Yeah, we all bro. fucked up, Tim. We all fucked up. Hip hop yeah, fucked this... up. We 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 all fucked up. Like, you know, we know. Everybody's just like, you know what I'm saying? And and shit's crazy, bro. Yeah. Life too short, bro. Yeah, Life man. too short. I yeah, love you, bro. He was great, man. Love you, Timbo, man. Thanks for getting on, man. Love you. All right, bro. Stay okay. up. And so, tough time for hip hop. Tough time for hip hop. Let me tell you something. Let your darkest moments bring your most clarity. Shout out to Manuel Lewis Webster on the check in. Uh, Meaning that when it's your tough times, remember the ones that are there for you and are next to you. Uh, and if the other ones you thought was going to be there ain't there for you, keep it moving. Put God first through good and tough times. Uh, people who really understand faith and really understand belief and really love God, uh, they know and unfortunately, you don't want to hear this, but he's in a better place. And there's no more suffering. There's no more nightmares. There's no more pain. Uh, he did his motherfucking thing on here. Okay? He came to earth. He did his motherfucking thing. And so we got to uplift his name forever, man. Uh, shout out to hip hop. Love you, man. The whole hip hop culture, the game. Let's uplift DMX like never before. Rashad, what's up, my brother? This is the biggest show in the game, yo. 
Uh, peace, y'all. Rest in peace, DMF.